How do you start? Usually that's one of the questions I get asked the most when it comes to learning new things or just trying new things, building new things. How do you actually find the ideas and then put them into practice? How do you start? I actually have a full length video that you can see here on my thoughts on this, but I figured let's read an article to get someone else's thoughts. How do you learn something new? How do you start? And maybe if you're anything like me, you have all those ideas bouncing around in your head. Which one do you actually choose? So today we're reading how to start a new programming project by the coding sloth. If you have not heard of the coding sloth, fantastic YouTube channel that I'll link in the description below or in the show notes, that's the coding sloth. And this is the notes, the slothbytes.beehive.com that you can subscribe to as well. But this is how to start a new programming project from the coding sloth. I got multiple responses from subscribers asking how to start new projects and how to get new project ideas. Since this newsletter is a new project, it only made sense to start here. Let's break down how I start new programming projects. Project ideas. Finding a project idea can be as simple as solving a problem you encounter in your daily life or as complex as trying to create the next billion dollar company. Now, if you don't know a single thing about programming, you should instead focus on learning the programming language itself. Understand the basics before trying a project. Once you have a solid grasp of the fundamentals, you can start applying what you've learned with practical projects. Here's how I think of project ideas. Steal, I mean, take inspiration. The project doesn't need to be groundbreaking. The goal is to apply what you've learned in a real world context. Look at projects that are commonly recommended to you. YouTube, books, etc. These are usually designed to teach you fundamental programming concepts and program solving skills. This could be creating a calculator, a simple blog, recreating something, etc. Two, add your unique twist. Once you find a project you want to attempt, think of ways you can make it unique. Career tip, recruiters see thousands of applicants and they most likely see the same projects. You need to stand out. Here's an example, making the classic to-do list app. We can make it unique by turning it into a mood-based to-do list app. This simple change makes it unique, a to-do list app where users create a task and when they complete the task, they describe their mood when they were working on the task. Even though it's still a to-do list app, it stands out. Plus, you'll end up learning more than if you simply followed a tutorial. How to start the project. One subscriber asked, how should you plan it out properly when there's so many unknown variables? One, start small. Begin with what you know. Break down the project into smaller, manageable tasks. This helps reduce unknown variables and makes it easier to adjust as you learn more. Once you start working on the project, you'll start to recognize what needs to be done. Two, iterate. As you work on the project or finish the tutorial, if you're watching one, look for ways to enhance your project. Try to make it more complex. For example, after getting the basic functionality working, add more complex features, ideally unique features that solve additional problems. This not only improves your skills, but also helps your project stand out from others. Three, focus on progress, not perfection. Aim for good enough rather than perfection. Perfectionism can stall your progress, especially when dealing with unknowns. Finish the important features first. Write code that works. You can always refine it later. If the code is obviously bad, then it's fine to refactor it. Just don't obsess over it. Once you feel that it's good enough, move on to a more advanced project or try a unique project that interests you and repeat this cycle. I think a lot of what the coding sloth is saying here is stuff that I actually really agree with. And there's a few things that I might challenge in a way. Uh, one thing, when it says write code that works, you can always refine it later. It's interesting because I feel like I said the exact same thing in my Laracast course that you can find, Laracast.com. I basically walk through the process of building an application in Laravel and Livewire from start to relatively close to finish. And one of the things I said is as I'm building, I wasn't trying to make this a perfect example of how you would know all the variables. And because we know all the variables at the end, now we can build it out from start to finish. It was more of, okay, we're going to make it work first and then we'll make it beautiful later. And that's important for, and you're, as you're starting new projects, as you're learning new things, it doesn't really matter the elements of how you're writing your code or structuring it or your folders that you're placing things in or naming conventions. Yes, that might be important if that is the actual concept that you're learning. Maybe you are learning how to use uh, single class actions within a Laravel project, or if you're learning 
React, maybe you're learning how to write your own custom hooks or learning specific hooks. Yes, then try to learn that as you're building your project. But if it's just you learning how to work on a specific concept or a specific uh, way of building things, then it doesn't really matter. Just make it work first. And then you can always refine it later. You can make it more beautiful later. In fact, I usually get too caught up on what something looks like little UI elements. I, I have a video planning to go out kind of talking through my web dev challenge through Jason Langstorff. You can find that linked in the description below when I'm talking about it. But I, there was a lot of things that went on my head during that four hours of building something. And most of it was, okay, I'm actually not making it work first. I can always refine it later. But usually there would be something like, oh, there's this little UI element, or maybe I should uh, make sure I validate this uh, form or even just clear the form once it, once you, uh, you know, once you submit. And yes, those things are important, but that's just one small element of what my project was. It was more important for me to actually get every single piece of the project that I wanted to work first. And then I can add those little refinements as I go, make it work first, make it beautiful later. One thing that Coding Sloth said that I might challenge a little bit, I'd be interested to get your thoughts. So if you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment for me. If you're listening to this podcast, then uh, reach out to me on, on uh, Twitter or any other social network that I happen to be on. Uh, but one thing that Coding Sloth said was, uh, if you don't know a single thing about programming, you should instead focus on learning the programming language itself. Yes, I get that. But I also think one of the best ways to learn something is by building something. And you might think this is antithetical to some of the, the content that I put out. For example, the live wire crash course is more of a, it's not project based. It's saying, okay, here is each individual element and how you might use it in a very, you know, thrown together type of project. But I would say if you are learning, if you're, if you have never picked up, <laughs> you know, picked up a pe pencil and started programming, or if, you, if you've never touched HTML or CSS or anything like that, I think there's still much you can learn. If you say, Hey, I want to learn how to make a, you know, a one page newsletter, because then you're going to say, okay, how do I get something on the page? Well, I have a .html file and how do I have different size fonts? Well, I could have an H1 and then a paragraph. And all of a sudden you're starting to learn these elements of programming, um, you know, when it comes to at least HTML and CSS, but you do it through a specific task, a specific idea in mind. And I would even go so far as to say, this is probably one of my, uh, spiciest takes, I would even go so far as to say it's almost easier as a beginner, a lot, not easier in, at, at the beginning of the sense, but it's easier as a beginner to learn the basics of HTML and CSS in the context of a full stack framework, whether that is something like Astro. Um, Next.js might not be <laughs> exactly suited for this, Laravel. Uh, I almost think that that is a better start for beginners who are serious about learning in a project based format than trying to get the gra grasp the basics of HTML and CSS before diving into that. I think it's easier to kind of see it all in one big picture. Again, <clears throat> that's kind of my, uh, my spicy take, but the unique twist is the other thing that I think is incredibly useful. There's so many to-do list apps. And just like I mentioned in the video, that I'm linking up in the top or down below in the show notes slash description. There's so much you can do to continue to learn, continue to iterate, continue to add your unique twist, even in something like a to-do list app. Anytime I'm learning something, usually, especially if it's a new like framework, or even, even if it's a new piece of something within a framework, usually I'll build a to-do list app in some way, shape or form, but it might be you know, adding new bookmarks. And that's technically a to-do list app because I'll input a URL and it's saying, okay, now I have this bookmark. If I've read it, I click done. It's a to-do list, but it's in a bookmark form. Anyways, a lot of the times I'll try to come up with a project like that and learn. Maybe it's something like learning rails or Phoenix or 
Maybe it's even trying out Next.js 15. All of that stuff that I, I do, and I love doing it because it, it keeps me, I don't know, keeps me up to date in some ways, but it also helps me understand how certain uh, tools and frameworks and, and languages choose to do things. And it's in the process, a, a form factor of something that I'm familiar with, a to-do list app. I know all the pieces that I would need to learn from each individual element in order to make this happen. So how do you start a project? Start small, iterate, and focus on progress, not perfection. And like I said, in my Laracast course, if you haven't got the chance to watch that, hopefully you will. I, I think it turned out pretty good, uh, but there's definitely more like that coming on the way. I have so many awesome, incredible big plans for this channel and for the content that I'm pushing out. But whenever you're learning, whenever you're building things, uh, make it work first, make it beautiful later. Keep creating. Thank you.